So for this video, I just wanted to show how, what a great online community there is for working with Arduino and uh, how little you have to think sometimes. Um, I, I really didn't plan this out at all. I just, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take one of the simpler components out of my, my junk bin of Arduino stuff here and just Google it and see if we can find a program. I've even, I've never even used some of this stuff. Um, this is an Ethernet shield so that your Arduino project can communicate with the internet on its own. Um, Multicolor LEDs, little camera. Um, there's a, an SD and micro SD card thing. Um, this is a um, oh god, uh, what do you call it? It's a phone. Uh, you can put a SIM card in it and send texts and make calls and stuff if you if you can hook it up to Arduino. Uh, a little LED, it's really simple LCD display like a like an old um, I don't know VCR front or something. This is a more modern uh, color touch screen. I've never used that one, but okay. Here's the more here's the stuff we want to look at. The smaller stuff in here. Um, this is an infrared thermometer here. Uh, these are these AT tinies. These are a bunch of tiny versions of the whole Arduino board. Um, oh, how about an accelerometer? Yes, I think I think this is an accelerometer. That or it's a compass. Uh, well, that either way, that I think that's something that we can we can figure out without too much trouble. So um, an accelerometer is like what's in your phone that allows you to play games where you tilt around and, and something interesting happens. So. Um, Looks like it says MX2125 on it. Uh, let's let's just Google that. Okay, got a tab here. So what did I say? 2120. Oh, MX MX2125 uh, Arduino. Okay. Memsic. So I like this one here because it's actually from the official Arduino site, Arduino.cc. Uh, it says, yeah, accelerometer. It's a two-axis accelerometer. Okay. Uh, measuring acceleration up to plus or minus two Gs, so that's not very much, but probably enough for a lot of purposes, and um, I wonder how precise it is, though, is another good question. Okay, so there's a little picture of it, and um, this is a whole little project page. They've got a circuit for us to build, and then there'll probably be a, a program yeah, there's a program down here. We'll just copy and paste that in. Um, oh, look at this. They made this in Fritzing, which is what I was um, I was using Fritzing earlier today, tonight. Uh, it's, so even they, they even use it at Arduino. I assume they're involved with the development. Okay, so I just zoomed in on this circuit that I'm supposed to make. Um, awesome. I don't even need any resistors or anything. Otherwise, I would have had to pause and go find them. Okay, um, so I got a little breadboard already, as I figured I was going to use that, right? And looks like they've got it facing light. Well, I'm, I'm going to put it above because I think that's where the camera can see. All right, now I'm going to put the chip on that way and start uh, wiring it up. So what they've done here with that um, that black cable is that going from the ground ground pin into this here which is all along this blue line next to the red area that is all one connection so um, in their in their diagram was, I was like covering with my hand just now in their diagram it comes from here and goes into here and that is just con that's connected to these black wires as well so these this ground is going all the way to this pin right here and all the way to this pin right here so I'm gonna make that happen as well well it's gonna probably look a little ugly um, this is when some really short jumpers come in handy. I don't feel like grabbing them. Um, and the convention, by the way, is to use black um, for ground if you can, or maybe blue, failing that. So I got a couple of black ones here. So I'm going to go all the way to this far pin here uh -huh. from the ground. And this closer up one as well to the ground okay
By the way, it's a good idea to not have your Arduino plugged in when you're doing this sort of thing. I, I guess I'll go ahead and unplug it because um, if it had some unrelated program running previously stimulating these various pins that could be damaging or unpredictable to whatever new component you're plugging in. Um, really these things are sturdier than anybody would tell you but yeah. Alright let's get at the power. That red one is going from positive 5 volts. So there's just a 5 volt power supply on this thing. Um, let's see it looks like I have to connect to it down here and I'm gonna have a little trouble getting it. Let's see, so V in, ground, ground, that must make this five volts. Notice I used a different, there's a ground pin on both sides, they're the same though. And I'm gonna bring that over, so it only needs power in one place. So rather than connecting to this plus thing and routing it, I might as well just, whoops, I might as well just plug it right into, um, what is that, that's the furthest pin on this side of the three that. You can see it gets a little crowded sometimes. Alright, now it looks like they used a yellow one from pin 2 to this middle guy. So there's a middle guy right here from pin 2. Now they used pin 2 to avoid, I'm guessing, the serial pins. Pins 0 and 1 are also used for serial communications with the computer. Um, that doesn't mean you can't use them in your final project, but if you're going to be debugging and using the serial uh, communications, then you want to avoid uh, 0 and 1 while you're doing that. Okay, so now this blue one, oh, I don't know if this little guy's going to be able to reach. Um, this blue one is going from pin 3 all the way over to this, this far away middle guy. Come on, middle guy. Okay. I'm looking at all this from a funny angle, so you're all looking at it from straight up, and I can't actually see that right now, so uh, you can tell me if I did anything wrong. Ha! <laughs> Interesting, it looks like one of the pins is going unused. Um, I'm not sure what that would be for, uh, but what we've done is we've grounded two different spots, I guess that was necessary, and we've put a positive 5 volt, so that the, both the ground and the 5 volt is allowing electricity to flow through this thing, powering it. Uh, and then there are two, uh, what I'm guessing are going to be just data uh, pins, in uh, pins th 2 and 3. Uh, and that makes sense because this is a dual axis accelerometer. So you can tilt it about, you know, the, um, the Y and the X axis, the pitch and the yaw or, or something, um, and get data, get two different sets of data. So it makes sense we would need at least two pins. Uh, I wonder what the third pin is. It, it could just be, sometimes there's just, there's nothing connected. They just left it there for symmetry. All right, let's go back and see here. Oh, according to according to this, it looks like temp. I wonder if it's a, if there's a thermometer on there too. Hmm. Well, it doesn't look like we're using it right now. All right, so let's go down here to the program, and uh, yeah. All right, there's a big there's a big comment header. I'm just gonna skip that. I'm just gonna copy this stuff. Now, in general, you should probably keep that comment header and, and read and understand it, but um, I will go ahead and interpret this for us this time. Oh, I opened up a, uh, a program. Oops. Opened up this earlier, so I'm just going to paste over all, or get rid of all that and paste. Okay, let's pull this thing down and get a bit more going on here. So, well, I wish I could get it all in one. Okay. So uh, up here, ah, they've got some um, they've got some constant integers uh, for these pins. Okay, so that's a little different than a way that we've done it in the past, and it's still yet not the best way to define a constant pin variable. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really matter uh, for a project like this. Now, if you're if you run it right in a really big project and worried you're going to fill up your your um, Arduino, then you'll have to look into special tricks to keep it smaller. Okay, so they defined some pins, uh, and they got their setup. Okay, we know what this means. This means they're going to be using the serial port. So they initialize the serial port. Ah, and look at this. They're using the X pin and the Y pin, which correspond to 2 and 3, the two input pins we were talking about. They're setting them as input rather than output. Okay, now 
I hadn't happened to do that in these videos yet, but they are input output pins, so you can pick input or output. So they're input. Um, they're setting up a couple of variables, and they didn't assign them any numbers yet, so you can set them equal to zero or one or whatever you want to start them at, or you don't have to do that. So they say they're variables for pulse widths, okay, pulse x, pulse y, and then there's the variables for accelerations x and y. So they're just they're just allocating some stuff they're going to use later. This doesn't do anything yet. It just sets aside some memory in the chip. Ah, so here's something actually happening. They're using the pulse in command. So we're reading data from the x pin and the y pin. Uh, pulse in. So what this does is it uh, it checks and it counts how long the pin is high for. So over, back over on our on our circuit, uh, the accelerometer is being powered, but it has its own capabilities. And what it does is it sends pulses out of a certain length, a certain width. Um, and uh, those pulse widths correspond to how much acceleration it's feeling. So I'm not sure exactly, but it could be that the longer the pulse, the more acceleration. Um, and that's just a that's a one way of of digital communications. It's called pulse width modulation (PWM). Um, although, yeah, I, I suppose you could call it that in this case. All right. Um, and so it just it's sort of raw data. It's an amount of time really into pulse x and pulse y. But that doesn't really make sense um, for acceleration. So what we need to do is do a little math and convert that. What they're doing is converting it um, into let's see, milli-g's, milli right? So Earth's gravity is 1g or 1,000 milli-g's. Um, that's an interesting way to do it. Uh, you can also, maybe we'll change this to meters per second squared at some point. And then afterwards, it prints the value. So it prints the acceleration in x direction. Um, oh, and then it prints a tab. This is a special way to, to print a tab, you know, like when you hit tab and it puts, yeah. Uh, and then it prints the Y, and then this one just prints a new line. Okay, another way would just be to print LN right up here instead. But, and then it delays for a, uh, what's that, a tenth of a second. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plug the board back in, and we will install this program on the chip. This may make me save it. Okay, compiling, uploading, done. Let's have a look at the serial monitor. Hmm. Okay, so I'm getting mostly zeros for X, so it was printing X first, and some numbers for Y. Now I'm going to go ahead and mess with this thing. Let's see what we get here. I'm tilting it, and yep, look at that. The numbers are changing. Putting it back down tilting it in the other way so there's some negative numbers that way and were they positive this way and they're positive this way very cool okay now let's tilt it about the other axis get negative numbers for acceleration x and then positive this way I'm thinking yep all right so uh, either my my table is crooked or or um, it needs to be kind of calibrated or something like that probably my table is crooked this is a um, this is one of those big plastic tables you set up for picnics and I'm using it as my computer yeah all right well that's that's pretty cool um, see how easy that was really I mean I we didn't really need to know anything I, I read through line by line but I suppose you didn't even need to do that you could have just uploaded it and saw what happened um, but let's let's play around with it just a little bit for for one thing I, I looking at these numbers is a little bit um, unclear to me what I'm looking at. I'm going to go ahead and change this so that it tells me first what I'm looking at. So that's the uh, AX. It's just a little, uh, so AX equals, right? And print acceleration and then YX equals, or AY. AY equals that. Okay, why well, my applicate what whatever. All right, so that'll that'll just make it a little clearer. Uh, let's have a peek at that. Save it, upload it. To do it. Oh, okay. Check out the monitor. There we go. Okay, so I like that better. 
All right. And um, what else should we do? Let's change those into uh, meters per second squared. So I am a physics guy after all. Uh, just get rid of some of those spaces while I'm at it. Okay, so if we were in uh, millige, well, first of all, when I do this, I'm going to do some math that's probably going to end up with decimal numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here and define um, some doubles, those those larger numbers that can also be decimals. And I'll just call them uh, AX and AY, since they already took those longer names. And let me go ahead and convert. So um, AX is going to equal to whatever this was. So this is in millijes. So if I wanted to convert that into G's, I would, uh, what would I do? I would um, divide by 1,000. Divide by 1,000. That's G's. And in every 1G, there are uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. Notice that how many spaces I put in between my math symbols don't matter. Just do whatever you think looks best. I usually put a few spaces in like that. I think it, it's a little easier to read. And then uh, a y will be acceleration y. This um, copying and pasting is a double-edged sword in programming, by the way. Uh, so often will I do something like, um, you saw me a second ago, I copied it down, and then I changed this y, and then maybe I'll forget to change this x, and, and it'll, you know, you won't get any kind of error. The computer thinks that's what you wanted to do, and then, like, freaking hour later, you realize your error and shoot yourself. All right. So let's try that, and then let's print these values instead. So my variable was called AX and AY. So now these should be in meters per second squared, and they should be uh, small decimal numbers, because I divided by 1,000. OK, serial monitor. kind of wish that would pop back up automatically. All right, so we're getting a bunch of zeros. We have to do a big tilt to get something else. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Here's a good uh, point, good lesson. Uh, what we've done is we've taken an integer and divided it by another integer, and it made a really small number. And since they were integers, it just made it a zero. But if we do this, it, it's kind of silly, but that explicitly states that this is not an integer. This is a double, a decimal value. So when we take the integer divided by a decimal value, it won't just force it to be 0 because it's so small. It'll realize it's allowed to be a decimal. See, I, I make that mistake a lot because it's slightly different in different languages. There we go. All right, so now we're getting um, similarly uh, recognizable numbers. Oh, that tab is overflowing. If I just put, I'm going to put in two tabs. That'll make them further apart and prevent that from happening. There we go. Uh, it still happened. Whatever, you get the gist. Um, you've got the accelerations now, like that. I kind of want to drop this whole thing and see if it reads 9.8. Um, should I try it? I'm going to try it. I saw a 1. Hmm. Eh, whatever. I'm sure it's not perfect. Um, plus, I think I would want to drop it. I think I would want to drop it like like this, actually. Oh yeah, actually, before I before I did that, I saw the whole 9.8. I guess just just tilting it this way exposes that axis to all of gravity. Check out the x-axis is at about 9.5. There we go. And this will put the y-axis at around nine something. Yep. So all, all the glory of Earth's gravity. All right, and so that's, uh, that's setting up some random chip. Thank you, Internet.